One hears a lot about grown-ups who are nuts about steam trains and model aeroplane nuts and stamp nuts, but in music, uh, the obsessors we hear most about t tend to be Wagner nuts. It's uh, funny how you never hear about Mozart nuts or Beethoven nuts. Just those people who think that the German composer Richard Wagner, who passed on well over a hundred years ago, is the be-all and end-all of operatic music. Naturally, to keep all these folks happy, there is a worldwide chain of Wagner societies. At their meetings, those who can't get enough of Richard's music at home get together to hear more and to discuss the various interpretations of the master's works. The immediate past president of the Wagner Society in Sydney is Richard King, and he's with me in the studio this morning. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Leo. What makes a Wagner nut, Richard? Well, it's, there's a million reasons why people come to Wagner. It's... Um they, some approach it from the music, they get so enamoured of the singing that uh, that's the way they come to it. Others come through the drama. Uh, they're uh, very interested in the uh, mythology uh, in the music. So there's a, a million reasons. Um, I mean, the books that are written on Wagner, I mean, apparently the greatest number is, of books written are about Jesus Christ. The second greatest number, about 28,000, are Napoleon. And the third greatest number, all worldwide in many languages is 25,000 on Wagner and apparently another 10 each year come out on some aspect of his life or work. So what can be said in 10 new books that haven't been said in 25,000? So there's, that's as many reasons why people come to Wagner. <laughs> in addition to that, of course, you, you have all the various theatrical directors applying new and uh, erudite interpretations constantly. to the works mm -hmm. on a constant, on a fairly constant basis. Mm -hmm. And considering that there's a relatively small output, isn't there? I mean, he didn't write that many operas that are in regular performance. But of, the, of uh, many composers, 99% uh, of his operas that he did write are regularly performed, whereas you can't say that of many other composers. That's right. Do you enjoy the music of other composers, or do you tune out when you hear a little bit of Schmalzi Puccini? Um, no, one uh, can appreciate music. Uh, I'm c quite Catholic in my taste, so I don't <laughs> worry about that. No, Ricardo Strauss. But are, but are there others who people. don't dig any, anything but Wagner? Um, you don't come across those people very often. Um, in, in Bayreuth one year, I met these uh, Americans, and uh, they'd come to live in, Bayreuth, in in Germany so that they could travel all over Germany and hear Wagner. They were They were... They killed the performance after you came out absolutely on cloud nine thinking, oh, marvellous. They say, oh, well, she couldn't do this and he was terrible and he was this. And, and of course, by the end of it, you were, oh, it was so negative. Uh, but they had, couldn't see the woods for the trees, I felt. One of the things that the Wagner Society has done recently is produce this uh, extensive and very impressive time, which was the result of a seminar you ran at the time of Meistersinger last year. Yes, uh, each year when the Australian Opera uh, does a Wagner or a Wagner-related production, uh, we conduct a seminar at the Goethe Institute, which is an all-day affair. It goes from 9 in the morning till 5.30 at night. And we usually, very fortunate, get a very fine line-up of speakers. Um, and one will present a musical analysis, the next one the libretto, and then one perhaps about the mythology behind the, the whole concept. And um, we've done recordings of this. Uh, we can present tapes, and we've presented this uh, journal, which is the first major tome that we've done. We do a newsletter regularly, but uh, this is our first major tome. There's a certain evangelical air about your crusade. What does the Wagner Society do in a practical sense to promote performances of his works? Well, uh, each year we sponsor um, perhaps uh, a lead singer in a production of Wagner. Uh, what does that cost you? Well, last year we put $10,000 towards the uh, performance by Donald McIntyre. And money well spent, I might add. Oh, yes, there's one of the greats. And um, this year we're putting money into the Valkyrie production. Um, the year before we put uh, 10000 towards the uh, Lohengrin production. And uh, each year we present uh, $2,000 or approximately that amount. We pay the airfare for the recipient of the Wagner Society Scholarship. And uh, last year John Wegner won. Oh, no, the year before, last year was Bernadette Cullen and this year Rosemary Gunn. And they've all uh, gone to Germany, um, also assisted by the German government, uh, studying Wagnerian roles all over Germany and in Bayreuth, etc. That's an awful lot of money for a society with about 300 members, isn't it? Well, um, 
We do have the, the, little, car the little carrot of... Uh, if people donate money to the society through the Elizabethan Theatre Trust, they do get a tax deduction, so it does attract a little bit of money that way as well. I've met an awful lot of people, uh, I happen to be mad about Wagner too, and a lot of the people I talk to groan at the thought of sitting through a Wagner opera, and yet many, when they actually get to do it, are, are bowled over. That's right. It's, it's, a, it's a funny thing with Wagner. There's, there's very little indifference to Wagner. It's either absolute fanatical love or absolute disgust and hate and uh, you find the ones that uh, make the noises that don't like the Wagner very often have not sat down and listened to it or tried to understand it or have really never been exposed to it. Wasn't it Rossini who said there are some wonderful moments in Wagner and some really dreadful quarter hours? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, I, I, I think I've come to the view that most of it is wonderful now. I, I mean, I, I used think to that's think that's right. Uh, that's right. The more to... you know, the more you every every uh, there's not one wasted note. <laughs> yeah, but of course people go on about the length of it, of course, and then they happily sit through the Last Emperor, which is about the same length as Valkyrie, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and they, they they can sit through a film of three hours. That's an right. awful lot of films seem to me to be much longer these days than Wagner operas. Well, in the, in the environment of Bayreuth, you've got the wonderful, um, the whole emphasis, the whole uh, focusing is, is the opera, and uh, you arrive at four o'clock, uh, you have one hour intermissions, and uh, at the end of the evening, about 11 o'clock, you go off to dinner somewhere, and you sleep in the next day, and then you rise, and away you go again, and, and it's just a wonderful uh, experience. It's something I've done many times, too, but you have to give yourself over pretty wholeheartedly, That's Sarah. To it, one of one of the possibilities, of course, of the and the most exciting possibilities of the restored Capitol Theatre, is that we could at last uh, see a full-scale production of, of the Ring or mm -hmm. the Major Wagner works with an orchestra of the proper size. That's right. That's that's the one light on the horizon that we're looking for. Because to. when we hear it at the Opera House in Sydney, it is very much scaled down, and I don't think people, can, even if they enjoy it there, the impact that they would get from hearing it with the massive orchestra that Wagner demanded right. and the size of chorus that he demanded, and also the, the dimensions of scenery. Mm -hmm. Well, would... Stuart Challender did a wonderful job in, in, in uh, writing down the orchestra for the productions we've done so far, but... Nevertheless, uh, after hearing Wagner in European and American opera houses, you, you know the difference. <laughs> you sure do. One of the things that I think very few Australians understand is that there is a considerable Wagner tradition here, even though people may only just be waking up to it. In the 30s and 20s, there were performances here. God That's knows right, how good yes. they were. But yes, they, touring companies. Touring companies yes. came and performed. Yes. And, of course, two of the great Brunhildes of the century have been Australians, haven't mm -hmm. they? That's right. That's Marjorie right. Lawrence and Florence That's Austral. Right. I mean, two of the great singers. So we've been able to produce the singers but uh, well, the, for the size of our population we do some amazing things I think <laughs> is the Wagner Society a closed shop or do you welcome new members oh no it's uh, anyone who's interested in the uh, music the drama any aspect of Wagner is very very welcome and and anyone interested in Strauss or Mahler anyone in that uh, the music of that tradition that's our main forte so if you wouldn't know the difference between Votan and Indiana Jones and you just thought you might be interested, oh, you could for goodness sake, yes. still rock along. <laughs> yes, that's How right. How much do you charge your members? Uh, if besides the... stinging them for those very, very big donations that you uh, seem to be handing out. Uh, it's $20 a year for single membership and $35 for a couple and uh, $10 for students and pensioners. So then if people have outgrown uh, model aeroplanes and stamp collecting, they can actually th throw themselves wholeheartedly into Wagner. Mm, that's that's right. That's right. It's, uh, well, it's an obsession uh, to a great degree, but uh, one with tremendous rewards. Yeah. Do you, are you pleased that the Australian Opera at last is doing a little bit more Wagner? They oh. had a huge success last year with the Master Singers, didn't they? That was, one of the, that was one of the reasons we formed the Society in 1980, was to show that there was a, an audience out there that were, were interested. And uh, it was quite extraordinary to be on the bus going back to the Domain after Valkyrie when it was first produced. And... Uh, hear the comments it was <laughs> oh well that was a bit long wasn't it Agnes and you know <laughs> well I enjoyed that aspect you know and last year with Meister Singer I mean you couldn't get a seat for love of money that's right so when the when they hear it when they're exposed to it I mean people say wow this is and something. that was a four and a half hour sit wasn't that's it that's right but it was it, it's it's fantastic experience I mean with Wagner that's the one thing that uh, um I think people don't realise that somehow this, they're changed by it. it. They're not the same people after they come out, especially The Ring or Parsifal. Something happens to them. Yeah. They're different well, people. <laughs> well, if anybody wants to undergo this remarkable transformation, <laughs> what number do they ring to join the Wagner Society? Well, uh, 
Uh, my gallery is the uh, registered office of the society, so that's 358-1919 uh, during business hours. <laughs> Good. So there you are. If anybody wants to uh, discover the joy of Wagner after they've discovered the joy of just about everything else, that's the number to call. Richard King, the immediate past president of the Wagner Society, talking to me there.